Hi guys, I'm Pete from Don't Tell The Wife and in this video I'm looking at the ARP9 by G&G Armament. The ARP9 is part of G&G's combat machine range, so that means that the majority of the gun is made out of their tried and tested reinforced polymer. The buttstock buffer tube housing and the main body is made out of that polymer, whereas your front handguard is actually a metal construction. At the back you have got a PDW style sliding stock, but it's only got two positions, you can have it all the way in or out. By taking off the stock with the catch underneath, you can get access to the battery compartment. While on the outside it looks big enough to house any battery you want, most of the space is taken up by the wiring and the MOSFET inside it. So you are going to be really restricted to the slimline style LiPo batteries. But with a little messing around you can fit an 11.1 LiPo in there. Airtech Studios do do a battery extension housing for this, so if your batteries don't fit you have got that option there. Along the top you do get some metal flip up iron sights. These are very easy to adjust by hand, you don't need any tools at all. If you don't want to use them, in between them you have got a full length rail system. So you've got plenty of space for any optics that you want to use. Behind the rear iron sight you have got the butterfly style charging handle and like most M4s, pulling that back is going to reveal your hop units in there. You will have to hold the charging handle back when you adjust that rotary style hop units inside, but other than that it functions just like everything else. The body of the gun has your standard M4 layout. The majority of the controls where you expect to find them, except for the mag catch, as you can see it's got the MP5 style paddle release which makes it really comfortable for left and right handed players. The gun itself does come with a 300 round proprietary high cap mag. It works just the same as any other high caps, BBs go in the top, winds to the bottom and away you go. I have found on this one that the spring doesn't seem to be strong enough to feed more than about 50 before you have to rewind it. I don't know if this is a normal problem or just on this gun. However, if you don't want the 300 rounds, they do do mid caps and you have also got the option of a drum mag as well. At the front of the gun you do have a metal M-lock handguard. Now, this houses both the outer barrel and this plastic sound amplifier gives it a very unique and noisy crack each time you pull the trigger. However, if you don't want to have the sound amplifier on, you can take that off and that does reveal a 14mm counterclockwise, so suppressors and tracers can be put onto this instead. Internally, like I said before, you do have that rotary style hop unit with a tiny 128mm inner barrel. You do get a full metal version 2 gearbox with the G&G MOSFET and electronic trigger units as well. This ETU can be programmed for 3 round burst and is all done on the trigger. To do that, connect your battery up and of course make sure the mag is out. Flick to semi and pull and hold that trigger for about 15 seconds. Release it and now you full auto function this 3 round burst. If you want to take it back to full auto, do exactly the same again, flick us onto the semi setting, press and hold the trigger for 15 seconds, and away we go. The chrono, I'm using 0.2 gram BBs. Raise the fire on a 7.4. rounds a second. Raise the fire on an 11.1. So the trigger response on this is really good. ETU and MOSFET working really well together, no problems there at all. Gingy are not exactly the best MOSFETs in the world I'm afraid, so at some point you probably would want to upgrade this if you buy one of these guns. Three round burst as well, really fun to use, especially in CQB. Uh, if you're limited to one shot only, the trigger response on there is not a problem at all. I can see why a lot of CQB players like to use this gun. Only downside I can see is this buttstock here, even though there is a bit of texture, I can still feel it just slipping on my shoulder a bit. Other than that, it's a great gun to shoot. So to sum it up, you get a nice lightweight rifle. It doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart at all. It's got that lovely G&G polymer, which is just bulletproof. It's small enough for CQB games, 
but also has the range for woodland games as well, so it's a very universal gun. The only downside I know about this gun is I have seen players with heavy hands pull that trigger a bit too hard and break the micro switch on the ETU system. But replacement parts are available from g and stockists. Other than that, it is a beautiful little gun. It's really loud, it's really noisy, and it's just perfect for any beginner to start with. Like always, if you've got any questions, put them down in the comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching.